you're going to be hiking and climbing in the Sierra Nevada mountains this summer, there is a massive snowpack and you are likely to run into a lot of snow above 10,000 feet. So you're probably going to need an ice axe and crampons. So I'm going to talk about the basics of using an ice axe. First, the strap needs to be about that long, just above the point, so that when your hand is in it, you are not going to end up stabbed by it. That's the perfect length right there. To use it when you're climbing something fairly steep, you're going to have your hand through here, put it like this so it's not going to get away from you. Then you can clamp this into the snow and have a good handhold that way. If you're using two ice axes, you can use them like that. To climb Mount Whitney, I used a pole in one hand and the ice axe in the other. When you're going up a less steep slope and you need to just have something that doesn't sink into the snow, you can turn it upside down and sort of use it like a walking pole, like that. And the other way to use it is to hold it like this and sink the tip down into the snow. If it's really soft, then you still get a really nice hold in the snow. Then it won't bend back at you and you, you have that and you have your, your strap to hold you if it starts to, you start to slip. Crampons are another piece of gear you're gonna need for the snow. Um, this is, these are essentially the same kind of crampon but with a slightly different strap set up. This is sort of the more modern style of crampon. Um, I'll show you how to put those in there. The other thing you're going to need is a good pair of boots. These are stiff enough for crampons, really stiff. I mean, they do not, they do not bend. They have a fiberglass shank in them. Um, but you can certainly get away with a pair of sort of day hiking boots that are, you know, not completely stiff. They will work to do the job. Typically, you want your crampon straps on the outside of the boot so that when you tighten them down, they end up, uh, the strap hangs out to the side so you don't get your other leg caught up in the strap. The way you work this is to slide the front of the boot up into there, get this, snap it sort of down in like this, bring this up, around, back into the strap, and then you can usually find a way to sort of tuck this under so it's not sticking out anywhere. This one is crisscrossed in the front. Like so. And then you tighten that down. This crampon is basically the same, except that instead of having a crisscross strap, you go through the loop in the front and back into your thing, back into the clamp or the uh, buckle. This one, same thing. You go around, back into the buckle. These little rubber boot things are nice for uh, having it in your backpack, so it doesn't stab you in the back if you happen to not have a bag for them or something. And this more modern crampon style is actually quite a bit easier to get into, although I always worry about the plastic part of it breaking or something, but, uh, you know, I'm paranoid like that. So this goes through here. and then back around, fully all the way around your boot, and then into the buckle, like that. A couple of safety tips for cramp on use. Number one, when you're walking, you're going to need to lift your feet a little bit higher. You can't drag your feet or the cramp on gets stuck in the snow and you'll trip. The other thing is never 
ever slide down a slope with your crampons on. I actually ended up rescuing a guy once who was sliding down with his crampons on, dug his feet in from the side, and he went like that and broke his ankle. And his only way out was for us to get him back to our tent and then to call in a helicopter for $15,000. Also, he had a broken ankle, which was not good. One other piece of safety equipment I chose to bring on this trip was just a length of like four or five millimeter poly rope. Um, this was really just for emergency, maybe to tie somebody in to the slope if they got hurt, slipping down, um, just to hold them in place while we could get things done. Certainly didn't need to use it. We weren't using this as a climbing rope. This is not a climbing rope. Um, but it's always nice to have a length of rope for safety use in, in case you need it. And this was just from Home Depot for, I don't know, 10 bucks or something. So it's, it's fairly light and contained. So it fits in the backpack easily. All right, time is 3.50. Just about to start the Whitney portal. Time to rock and roll. So this is the 99 switchbacks, which as you can see, it doesn't exist. So we're just going straight up. Thank you. 
according to the watch, we're at 13,919 feet. I believe I saw a 1396 something on the way. But uh, we're stopping here and turning around because it's 115. And it's going to be probably 45 more minutes to the summit and then two hours back to that chute, so not safe. Uh, it's going to be a fast section here. I think our trails are going to meet. I'm going to go ahead. You going to be okay? Nice. So going up didn't scare you, and this does? I, I, <laughs> I felt like I got out of control after no. the first one. And that, that is uh, certainly a valid fear. This is steep as hell. <laughs> so, but just try to keep that plow between your legs. You don't have to have your legs so far apart. Kind of keep them like a little more like shoulder apart and dig your heel in a little bit, you know, slightly bent knee. And this thing, you know, you're... I get it to chip and then it starts like... Yeah, but you just got to push back. Push it back into it because you're, you're just hitting little ice chunks and it's going to catch and then go forward and catch and go forward. Yeah. Just, you know. I've been able to stop myself. Yeah. Good, so. Shall I go first? We're going to meet up here.
You want to go first? <laughs> All right. 